Hey, welcome back everybody to the channel. Today I'm going to change the brakes on this Dodge here. I think it's a duster or stepway, I'm not even sure. But you will see in the title of the video anyways. I already have the creature underneath the car, as you can see. So I'm just gonna lift it and I'll show you how to replace your brakes on this Dodge here. So now that the car is up in the air, I can start the job. First, I need to remove the wheel. They are held by four bolts. I think they are size 17 mil, but I'll let you know anyways. So I'm gonna show you only one side, as the other side is gonna be exactly the same, and that I'm gonna do that one off camera. So I'm gonna remove the wheels, then the brake caliper, and then, then the brake caliper holding bracket, and finally the brake discs. And I'm gonna replace all of them, but you will see exactly how to do it, so that you can do it on your own car as well and don't need to pay for someone to do the job for you. So before you start anything, the most important step is to break these bolts loose, because if you don't break them loose as a, as a first thing, you may end up stripping the head or the inside of the bolt, and then you have to drill it out or you need to find another way to remove them. These are five millimeter hex bolts. So it's a five millimeter hex bit, but you can also use an impact driver in order to remove these. You can ask someone to step on the brakes while the brakes are still on the car, so that prevents the rotor from spinning. Or you just place a screwdriver in between the brake disc and then it will stop the rotor from spinning. So first I'll try without these things to see if I can break it loose or not. So the first method didn't work out for me, I'm gonna use a screwdriver as I have no one to step on the brakes as my helper is recording the video. So I place the screwdriver just like this and the rotor now cannot spin as you can see. Okay, the bottom bolt is loose, I just need to break with the top one, but I think I'm gonna use the impact driver as it's starting to strip. Finally, I was lucky I can remove this bolt. As if you can see, it doesn't stay, the bit doesn't stay straight into in the head of the bolt as it started to strip already. So uh, hopefully a new bolt is provided with a new brake disc, but we will see that later. Now you need to remove this brake pad guide. It's quite easy, you just remove it with the screwdriver or place your hand in front of it so that avoid it jumping into your eye or something like that. Then that's it. Now you need to remove the brake caliper itself. You can do it by undoing the, the brake caliper guide pins here, which are inside this rubber boot or in cover. You need to remove these caps and you will, you will have access to the bolts. So let me remove the caps. This is one on the top bolt and one on the bottom bolt. And now you can remove or break loose the bolts. I think they are size 8 or 7 hex bit, but we will check. Okay, I'm gonna undo first the top bolt, which is a size 7 hex bit, and then the bottom bolt. This was quite easy. Okay, let me break loose the bottom one. And now I'm gonna undo this bottom bolt. It is a size 7 as well. You can remove them completely so that you can remove the brake caliper itself. So I prepared myself a hook 
because when I remove the brake caliper I want to hang it on the recoil spring so that it's not in the way when I'm gonna work on the brake disc or rotor whichever you prefer to call it so let me remove the brake caliper just pull it off just like this and now we can hang it And now it's not going to be in the way. We can also remove the, the brake pad. The next step is to remove this caliper holding bracket. It is held by two bolts. I think they are size 15 or 17. So now I'm gonna remove the brake caliper bracket. The bolts are 18, size 18 hex. It is one is here and the second one is down there. So I'm gonna undo them. Okay, I'm gonna use a cheater bar and the swivel head ratchet. I'm gonna show you real quick how to do it with that. So here is the swivel head ratchet. I'm gonna use this one to take the arm out of the wheel arch. And I'm gonna use rather leverage than force. I'm gonna put the check handle over it and I'm gonna break it loose with this method. Is loose now I'm gonna do the same with the bottom bolt it's loose as well so I'm gonna carry on with the with just hand only also, you could have used some penetrating fluid, just like WD-40. And now the brake caliper holding bracket is off. You can clean it afterwards. I recommend it to clean it, at least here where the brake pod attaches and moves inside of it. So that way you can avoid squeaking. You can also use some, some paste on it or anti-squeaking paste. And finally, you can remove that last bolt in the brake caliper, in the brake disc. And with that removed, you also remove the brake disc itself or rotor. Here is the wheel hub. You can clean this one as well to make the surface flat so that the brake disc sits more evenly on it. We won't have jerking feel in your steering when you are driving or braking. So now let me clean the components. I'm gonna show you that one as well. And then I'm gonna replace everything with brand new parts. So I'm gonna use a wire brush attachment in a drill, but you can use just a regular wire brush and do it manually. I prefer this method as this one is much more convenient and quicker for me. So it's nice and shiny now. I'm gonna do the same with the caliper holding bracket, but I'm gonna use a manual wire brush. Let me show you that one as well. So it is very important to clean it properly here where the brake pod goes. Let's do the other side as well. And now you can start to reassemble the things. So now you can put the new brake disc back in. Once it is in its place, make sure you align the holes and secure it with one of the retaining screws. You can secure it with the other one as well. At this point, you need, don't need to tighten them, tighten them all the way. You, can, you will have chance to do that as the last step. So now the brake disc is in its place. You can clean it with brake cleaner 
and then start reassembling the parts around it. So let me clean it first. So I'm gonna use a brake cleaner in order to degrease it and clean the surface of the brake discs as they are from the factory. They are covered in some kind of grease to, to prevent it from rusting. You do this beforehand before you're doing before you placing the brake disc on its in its place and that's pretty much it now i can start replacing the parts around the brake disc so now is the brake caliper holding bracket Next step is to replace the new brake pads. You can place the new one back in on the outer side and then one back to the brake piston itself. But first you need to push back the brake piston all the way you can. Always when I do the pushing back thing, I always open the brake fluid reservoir in order to release pressure. Some fluid may flow out if it's flowing out, you just siphon some out of it. You need to constantly monitor the level of the fluid to prevent from flowing out or dripping. So what happened was the customer brought the new brake pads, which you can see here. This is the new, this is the old one, but they don't match. This is quite smaller. So as you can see, it doesn't fit properly. So there is no problem because I just went to the local parts store and bought, bought the correct one so I can replace for him with the new one. So I can put the new one back in just like that and the other one which is here in the brake caliper. So first you need to remove the old one, you just basically pull on it, that's it. Now the brake caliper piston needs to be pushed back in I prefer to use my tool for that, which is a ratcheting tool. So you ratchet back the brake piston just like this, while also monitoring the level of the brake fluid so that it doesn't overflow. So now it doesn't ratchet anywhere anymore back, so it reached its final point. You can reverse the ratchet, remove the tool, put the new brake pad back in, It clips in just like that and now you can pull these pins all the way as you can pull them so they don't stick out from these rubbers and now you can place or just slide over the brake caliper just like this and now you need to secure it with the bolts so now use a size 7 hex bit and tighten the two bolts, the top and the bottom brake caliper bolt. <coughs> Place back the, the dust caps or dust boots. And finally you can place back this retainer spring just like this. So now finally it's back in its place. And the last thing, don't forget to tighten these two retainer screws and then you can put back the wheel and you are done with the job. I'm gonna do the other side of the camera, but basically that's it. That's how you replace your front brake pads and rotors or disc on this Dacia duster or stepway. I'm not sure whichever which model it is, but I'm gonna put it in the description and in the title of the video as well.